Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and welcome to the second part of this itinerary app series. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about source control and how to use it to collaborate with others, how to secure our code. In the previous video, we set up our initial project. So now let's get started by backing up our code and look at some options for doing that. In this video, we're going to talk about connecting to Bitbucket, we're going to talk about some of the source control features inside of Xcode, how to view your changes, and then how to save those changes to source control. Okay, first we're going to learn some words, such as what does source control mean? Well, source is actually short for source code. In this case, it is the Swift language that you can read. It is the text that you type into Xcode. And this is as opposed to machine code, which is the ones and zeros or the hexadecimal you know, letters and numbers that you see sometimes when you're debugging. Okay, and for control, well, that's pretty easy. I think a lot of you know that. It's just being able to create, change, and delete files and keep a history of it as you do things. So that is source control. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how does source control work. Well, the way source control works is you write some code and then you save versions of it. So you may also hear source control referred to as version control. And having versions of your code is good just in case you want to back up in time and see how something had changed over time. Especially if something is broken and you want to go back to a point earlier when your code is working. So then you can pinpoint what specifically broke your code. So what you do is as you're coding, you save versions of your code locally at first. And these versions are called commits. When you commit your code, you can add a helpful message to indicate what you did in that version. You can then back up your commits to a remote server to better protect your code in case anything happens to your local computer. So when you have versions of your code backed up, whether it's locally or remotely, it is said to be in a repository. A repository basically means a place where things can be stored, like a box or a bucket or even a trash can. <laughs> Those are all repositories. You can store things in them. You have a local repository on your computer where you're coding, and then you can back up your commits to a remote server, and that is called a remote repository. Having your code on a remote server or a remote repository also allows you to share your code with other people. Then other people can contribute to your code and help you build your application. In this video, we're gonna look at two different options for a remote repository that, that you can put your code on. There are many other options that you can use, but we're just going to look at two for now, and then we're going to pick one. One popular tool for source control that is built into Xcode is called Git. Git is simply a tool that allows you to manage your code and your commits and version history. So we're going to look at remote servers that specifically use Git since it's built into Xcode. Okay, there are two remote repositories that are really popular that support Git. One is GitHub, and the other one is Bitbucket. And let's look at some of their features and we can compare. When you put your project on GitHub, it's going to be public by default. So anybody can see it. And if you want it to be private, it's going to cost about seven US dollars per month. It's good for open source projects. You know, it's good for displaying your work. If you want employers or, you know, recruiters to look at your work to see what you've done. And it also has good integration with Xcode. Bitbucket, on the other hand, is private by default. So if you put your project on Bitbucket, it's going to be private unless you say you want it to be public. When you put your project on Bitbucket, you can have up to five developers working on that code at one time. If you want more developers, then you're going to have to pay a little bit more money per month. But on the plus side, you can have unlimited private repositories. So Bitbucket is good if you want to keep your code private because you're going to be putting your app on the App Store and you're not necessarily going to share that code with other people. So for our purposes, I want to create a private repository for now while I'm developing. So I'm going to use Bitbucket. Once I'm done, if I want to showcase my work to the public, then I will use GitHub and just move my code over. And I also want to mention that I like Bitbucket because I find its interface a little bit easier and simpler to follow than GitHub. Okay, so we already have our initial project that we created from the previous video. Now let's go into Bitbucket and create a new repository where we can store this project remotely. 
Okay, after creating your Bitbucket account and logging in, this is most likely the first screen that you'll see. As you can see, it's a pretty simple menu. And then what we want to do is we want to create a repository. Okay, I'm going to give my repository a name. And I'm going to leave it as a private repository. Now, there's something else that I've noticed with this. It says include readme. By default, it's yes. I've had trouble when I include that readme and then I try to sync up with my project locally. It says there's some kind of problem and it can't sync. I need to push, pull. I'm not quite sure what it is. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I'm going to say no for now. Bitbucket supports different types of version control systems. Mercurial and Git. I'm going to leave it as Git because that's what's built into Xcode. And for advanced settings, I could give it a description. I don't think I really need to right now. Language is going to be Swift. This helps with the uh, color coding of the code. And then we're just going to create the repository from here. Okay, here we go. So here's our repo. And there's no code in it right now. But what we want to do is we want to copy this link right here, just from the HTTPS. Let's copy that. And we're going to use that link inside of Xcode. Okay, this is pretty much where we left our project. So what I want to do is I actually want to go to this tab over here for the source control navigator. And then I want to click on this gear icon down in the lower left hand corner. And then I'm going to add an existing remote. Okay, we'll just call it origin. And for the location, this is where I'm going to paste in the location with the HTTPS address. Let's add that. Okay, good. So now I have a local repository that I can save to. Because remember, when we first created this project, we clicked on the create git repository as well. So that will enable me to save versions of my code locally. But what I just did now is I connected this project to Bitbucket. So not only can I save versions of the code locally, but now I can save versions of the code remotely to Bitbucket. So let's start with our first commit. And remember, a commit is simply saving a version of our code or our project as it stands right now. And the way you do that is you come up to source control and you say commit. And you can view all the changes that we've made. And basically the change here is, and if you look at this, there's no, you can't really see the changes because we actually deleted these files right here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to save this version of deleted files, you could say. <laughs> so here's the place where you enter in your message of like what happened. And so I, I'll just say setting up the project. Now you notice there's this other option down here, which is push to remote. So if I just commit this right now, it's only going to commit this version locally. What I want to do is since I'm connected to Bitbucket is I want to save this version locally and I also want to make a backup of it on my remote server as well. So I want to push those changes, push this commit or this version to my remote server. Okay, it needs my password so I'm going to enter that in here. And there we go. So let's go back to Bitbucket and let's take a look at commits. There we go. So by default, when we first created our project, it created a, an initial commit for us. And that's back on the 10th when I did the last video of creating our initial project. So that's when this initial commit was made. Then this is a commit that we made, well, it says 34 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea. Okay, good. So now we have a version of our code in Bitbucket. So now as I make changes and I start working on the project, I can make backups of versions to a remote repository. That way, if something happens to my local computer, I know I have a backup of the project on Bitbucket. And if I want a friend to help me with this project, then he can connect to Bitbucket and he can start working on it too and making changes and adding new versions or commits to this project. Okay, cool. So you get an idea of how you can connect your project to Bitbucket, create commits, and then push them to Bitbucket to make a backup of them. That's a really good practice because you don't want anything to happen to your code 
And if you want to pull in one of your buddies to work on your project with you, then it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so let's go back into Xcode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another project because I want to demonstrate some of the things that you can do as far as like committing your changes and then reviewing those changes and then committing them. Okay, so what I've done is I created another project called Git Example. And I'm just going to make some changes and show you how Git works inside of Xcode. So let's make a change to this view controller. And we'll say this is feature one. And we'll pretend we added a function, a, a button, or something like that. Now the first thing I want to point out is you'll have these letters or symbols next to your files now. This only shows if you've created a Git repository when you created your project. So as you can see, this file's been modified. I can add a new file, and let's just add a switch file. And now you see there's an A next to it. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what it means, added. You can also see all your changes quickly by clicking this filtered button down here, which only shows files that have been added, updated, deleted, things like that. So if I click that, it shows all the files that have changed. Now if you want to see what has changed in those files, you can click on it, and then you can click this button right here, which shows the version editor. Let's create some more space here. And you can see the view on the left is the before, and the view on the right is the after. So you can see that this line was added right here. As far as like file added, you know, it just says right here, the before was no file and afterwards there was a file. Okay, so let's commit this. Just go to source control and hit commit. And again, you can see this file was added, this file was modified, it shows the same view that we saw before. And then the project was also modified because a new file was added, right? See, this is right here, function swift. So this file was added, so it's going to change your project. And then we can add a message right here. I'm just going to call this feature one. I don't have this connected to GitHub or Bitbucket or any other remote repository, so this option isn't available. OK, good. So now we have a couple of commits. Let's go back to the source control navigator and expand this. And don't worry if you don't know what branches are right now. I'll be getting into that in the next part of this video. So as you can see, when we created the project, we have this initial commit. And then I just did another commit, which is feature one. And over here, you might see these funny numbers and letters, and you might wonder what that is. That is basically a unique ID that's associated with each commit. Now, if I want to see what changes were made in this commit, I can double click it, and it'll show me right here. And this part's familiar with you now. This is the before, this is the after. You can see what was changed. If you want, you can also click on the assistant editor, and it will show you over here. Uh, you might want to, if you don't have enough space here, you can also change it so it's on the bottom. And then you can go through and see what, see what it changed quickly from there. As you can see, the initial commit was just basically a bunch of files added. Okay, good. So that should give you an idea of what commits are and how to view the changes that you made in those commits. So one question you might ask is, well, when should I commit? How much code should I write before I actually commit? Personally, what I try to do is once I finish a complete feature or I complete a task, then I want to commit. I'll also commit at a point when the code is working. So you know, when you're adding a new feature, things are broken at first and then you get it working, and then I might commit at that point. Because the next task, I could break the code again and then not understand how I broke it, so then I can compare all the changes that I've made and then pinpoint how I broke it. I'll also commit before I try something that might be complicated. So I might finish one thing and then commit it in a working state and then experiment or do this complex task and try to get it working. Because if it doesn't work, I just want to undo all my changes and go back to the previous commit when I know the project was running. Try not to commit code when it's broken or it won't build. Because if you roll back to that version, you won't be able to undo the changes
to a point when your code was working again. <laughs> and so if you roll back to a previous version when it was broken, then you still have to fix it and get it to a point when it works again and then just do another commit. Okay, great. So that's it for this first chapter in using source control. You learned how to connect your project to Bitbucket. We also did an overview of some of the Xcode source control features. And we looked at how to view changes before we commit, or even after we commit, we can view the changes that went into that commit. Stay tuned because there is a chapter two where we're gonna get more into using source control within Xcode with some a little bit more advanced features. And these advanced features are really gonna help you out in developing your application. All right, thanks guys.